Hello, my name is Chad Carlson from Platform.sh, the end-to-end DevOps platform that enables developers to build, evolve, and scale their fleets of websites without managing their infrastructure. We're excited to be a part of this Drupal Gov event, and we'd like to introduce your next keynote. Why Drupal Accelerates Digital Transformation in the Western Australia Public Service. And now, here's Bill Bell. Hello, everyone. Um, just set up my slide deck. There we go. Hi. As I've been introduced, my name is Bill Bell. I, I work with government agencies to deliver better online services using the whole of government platforms. I've been doing this and for the West Australian government for the last five years. In 2017, we set up our first whole of government platform for information services. Currently, we're developing identity platforms for both business and the community of citizens. In the very near future, we'll be looking at more transactional and smart platforms to get, get our citizens moving a transacting online rather than going to storefronts. Today, I'm gonna to show you how the Office of Digital Government a single platform that met the informational needs of most of the agencies of the public sector. Hi Bill, can we just uh, yeah. turn on the screen share at the bottom and I'll just put your notes on the screen. Okay, so uh, fair enough. <laughs> That's okay. Um, here, here's what we're going to cover. So let's get started. Um, the platform as it currently stands has over 600 informational services that have been so, curated. Hello? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Bill. Just if you go to the bottom at the air, in the air, events air, and just hit share screen. I'm loving it. That's all right. Thank you. So, so I know you got one. Start again. Is that what you're telling me? No, no, it's okay. I, think, I know you've got one screen, so it's hard to tell what's going on. It's okay. Just uh, want to share it. Love, it's good. Loving the life. Right. I'll be good. Yes, fantastic. And right, so do I start again? It's up to you. That's okay. Right. Okay. I'll, 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 I apologize for anybody watching. Um, again, I, I work with government agencies to help them deliver better online services using all of government digital platforms. I've worked in the for the West Australian government for about five years to, to a, at a whole of government level. Um, our first whole of government information services platform was delivered in 2017. We're currently developing whole of government identity platforms for both business and the uh, citizens. And very soon, and I'm thinking probably the end of next year, we'll start work on more transactional or smarter platforms that should divert citizens from storefronts on, on a, to a more online environment. Today I'm going to show you how the Office of Digital Government built its information services platform that met the needs of the majority of WA public sector agencies. On the screen is what we're going to cover. So let's get started. Currently Today's platform has 600 cu curated services that have, make it easy a, for services to be found. They're more accessible and more understandable, and they have mobility in mind. Only three years ago, this number stood at 87, and the standards were uh, to different uh, levels of quality. Um, we've onboarded 30 agencies. Um, out of a possible 140 agencies, but we have some big agencies in there. And we have 10 initiatives and initiatives could be a, um, categorized as events or a digital messaging that doesn't quite fit into one agency. An example of that would be the COVID messaging, COVID response messaging that we're currently doing, or a public consultations where we, we gather the data from all agency sites and present it as a whole of government view. We have predicted savings this year of over 900K well, a, to government. The agency, agencies get to keep this. So this is the carrot that gets them on board the portal. If you make savings, then you get to keep it. 
um, a, and obviously this would be made up of licensing costs, right? advertising agency costs, and of course the ICT duplication and support issues that come along with that. In the beginning, the, the site was little more than a reference site. Um, it had to be designed that way. We, we looked at agency sites and we aggregated their, their information onto the site. Um, it wasn't, it, it, it could have been said that uh, if the site had went down, it wouldn't have impacted agencies um, service delivery. But that's changed. We're, we're starting to see that with increased agency onboarding uh, and accessibility and mobility, the citizens are, have, are staying longer on the site and the agencies are reporting that there's, there's less activity in their other digital and physical channels. So like any major a website where, where you use web a statistics to um, to monitor and to a, optimize our solution. We're using sentiment analysis in our voice of the citizen platform that you see on the right hand side on the majority of pages. And we also are trying to build up trust right? and we do that by monitoring how our content is referenced and used by other websites and organizations. Since the, the COVID response pandemic, um, we have been regularly the number one WO website, a regularly displacing the Department of Transport. A, um, a, yeah, from a technical perspective, we run on Drupal 8 on a high performance lab stack. As previously mentioned uh, that in the early days, there didn't have to be a high level of availability. But these days, if we go down or if there is an issue, it quickly gets realized and escalated and we know about it in minutes or seconds, especially during a crisis or a, um, you know, intense times where the COVID messaging has to go out then and there. Um, we, we leverage the cloud hosting environment so that we can reduce or increase our availability times. A, in the early days, we could have been down for two hours a month and no one would have noticed. These days we're aiming to be down for less than four minutes. We use other platforms, for a, not, and it's not just Drupal. We use Elasticsearch for our search. We could have used the internal search, but we didn't think it would scale. And the extra power that the Elastic Cloud gives us, it makes it more than just a search engine. We started using um, Drupal Forms, but we found that we were paying highly um, qualified and expensive developers to develop them. So we looked at Forms uh, um, engines that agencies could pay for, but they could integrate with the portal. And our, our platform of choice is a job form, but there's, there's many others out there. Um, and MuleSoft, MuleSoft is new because we're moving towards more integrated uh, services. While uh, Drupal has uh, an API and a, a, a very comprehensive API, we want to put in a layer of abstraction and service uh, between that and our agencies and eventually that and our citizen developers um, that allow us to the, the flexibility of changing or redirecting traffic either to Drupal or to some other platform. So how do we get here? Um, after nine months of concentrated effort in 2016, 20, well, 20, 2016, um, the Office of a Digital Government developed the first state's first platform. And as you would expect with these things, its central focus was to build the capabilities within the public, West Australian public sector that would deliver better development the better digital services to the community. The, the strategy was delivered uh, through a process of intense consultation and research, both inside and outside the government. The outcome was deemed a success by the government of the day and the office was charged with delivering it. However, as is common with most government strategies, resourcing is its implementation was restricted to the resources of the office and any agency that wanted to collab collaborate with the program at a whole of government level. So 
and it's, as most government workers would know, uh, we were asked to do a lot with not very uh, much. Put it simply, we wanted to move people out of physical queues and get them online. We had the catch cry of people should be, access, be able to access digital services anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Research told us that a, um, the community doesn't care what level of government uh, we're in, whether it be federal, state, or local. They're only interested in getting services. We had noticed that other jurisdictions, such as UK Gov, New Zealand, Service New South Wales, were all using the one plan of class approach to, to simplify service delivery. So this, in 2017, WA government had 450 portals. Each of them well, spread across 140 agencies. Each of these websites had a unique user experience, were built on different technologies and had separate procurement and support arrangements. The opportunity to reduce duplication was obvious. Uh, by consolidating onto one platform, we, uh, we were going to save the state money. Based on uh, research from New Zealand, we estimated that hosting the majority of these web websites onto a single information services portal would save us 25 million over 10 years. Updated data suggests that we were conservative in that estimation. We felt we were on solid ground. The community expected the government to deliver these digital services. They were already using them in the private sector. One of the key industries would be the banking sector. How many, how many times now do you actually turn up to our bank to transact? By delivering a one-stop shop, research told us we would make it easier for the community to find services. It would be more secure. It would divert a um, traffic or a requests online and leave the harder requests to be dealt with by customer support people. It increased the equity of service delivery both in Perth and in the regions where services are, there's a lot less services. Uh, it would improve community satisfaction and from a government perspective, it would reduce the cost of service delivery due to reduced duplication. In the context of this, as an aside, our state's Auditor General also said that the state could save $2.2 billion if it reduced half of its mail, as in snail mail, and telephone transact and moved its telephone track transactions online. So soon after the strategy was released, the, the um, state or the office decided it was going to do a pilot program to determine what our community in Western Australia uh, wanted from a whole of government information services portal. With, uh, as with most pilot programs, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that the pilot did not uh, become the production solution. So we, we, we chose WordPress. And at that time, WordPress had stability issues, security issues, and we knew it could, couldn't handle the complexity of a multi-tenanted multi -tenanted government environment. We, but the advantage of using it was, well, we had ac access to tap into a lot of developers um, that, that had a lot of good UX experience. We wanted to get some insights from the community and we got over 5,000 requests. It was called alpha.wa.gov.au. Um, the main themes that we got were, it has to be simple to use, the use of language should be easily understood and not a government speak. It should be inclusive of people with disabilities and it should work equally as well in both the regions and, and in Perth. When we overlaid these insights with those of our agencies, we got these capabilities above. The green ones are the business ones and the uh, blue ones are the more technical. 
The purple ones were a business oriented, but were interesting to me because they, there was a lot of interest in making sure that there was ease of authoring and a flexible workflow. And from our research, we would have thought these, these um, things were the bread and butter of most CMS platforms. Um, obviously not. Right, so we, we scanned other jurisdictions, both in Australia and abroad. We used services such as Gartner to help us determine what was in the market. See that the Gartner quadrant there. And we used tier one consultancy firms to get some insights from their experience. Um, we chose Drupal. We, we chose Drupal Lite. And I divert here and say, I thought we had made a mistake when we chose Drupal because Drupal 8, because when I tried to get some of the developers in Perth, they were adamant that Drupal 7 was a better solution, but we stuck with it. So from a um, from a Drupal 8 perspective, we saw that it was enterprise ready, had a reputation for being highly secure, could be configured to meet the state's accessibility and mobility requirements had importantly had an active community of developers with some notable ones in Perth. And in addition, and very importantly for government, had a low barrier to entry, as in it was cheap. Even though, and we, I acknowledge that even if it's open source, the support of it is not cheap. You, get, you don't get a free lunch. So in Perth, predictive, predictably, predictably, our choice was challenged by both parts of the ICT industry and some CIOs within the public sector. For those of them that were interested, we show them, showed them that our research and approach to making the decision, and while still favoring their, their solution, they couldn't fault our process and reasoning. The best high level answer I can give to people when the challenge came as a discussion from a discussion from a tier one consultancy. They basically said all products in the Gartner, the uh, top right quadrant, have the capabilities to be a whole of government platform. They have different strengths and they have different weaknesses. But with a strong developer and third party community, they can be configured to meet your needs. So I've, I've been asked this question multiple times from CIOs to CEOs. And I find that that's the best solution for a, a put forward the, the value of Drupal as a platform. It can compete with a, the, the more proprietary and more well-funded platforms because it has you as a community that support it and that are active in supporting it. I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to a, move forward when version 9 comes out. So in February 2017, we launched the state's information services portal. Public and private sector user experience experts were brought in uh, to develop that accessible and mobile platform. Um, it's something that we uh, still value today. It's enshrined in our both our policy and our and our frameworks for any website design that we're doing. And it, it has a, had an impact in reducing the digital divide in Western Australia. As mentioned earlier, we believe once agencies saw the value of this platform, that they would move their content towards it as, as their web services came up for renewal. Right, so even even with the launch of the portal we also launched the digital services policy which supported our ict strategy and then we supported that with a policy framework that gave, gave agencies the guidance they need to both design their own content and how to move on to that portal we were confident that they would see Yet again, they we were confident that the agencies would see the value in investing in the platform. We had the technology, we had the policy and processes, we had 
government support, some could say we had a mandate, we were set. This is where, and I guess this is where the story should end for if it was going to be a good news story or uh, very logical and and uh, people they saw the value, but it didn't. The story's not complete at the next two pages. We were digitally disrupted. Um, and from our perspective, this was not a good thing. We had failed to appreciate that agencies were also one of our key stakeholders. We had built a low uh, citizen-centric platform that, that a, um, citizens could use, more easily find information and divert from, from agencies' existing channels. There was no agency adoption. We approached these agencies and they really thought it was a great idea, um, but they were just too busy to, to buy into it. And we work group this with people. We, we uh, talked to our, uh, the CIOs and what we found was that, as I said, we had concentrated on the citizen and had acknowledged that the agencies had needs as well. We did, did not address the fact that the agencies were proud of their organization and didn't want to use their, lose their agency's identity by moving to a whole of government platform. Um, we didn't acknowledge that the management in these agencies are required to publish machinery of government reports for consumption of other jurisdictions, the private sector and the government of the day. We did not address the fact that the government information, well, a, does form, that government information forms larger pieces of work, such as, and, and these pieces of work come through directed campaigns. For example, the COVID response. One, we learned one size does not fit all. Um, what we learned there was create relationships with agencies outside of work groups, they create personal relationships. Um, uh, I remember being in, in the Department of Justice and just listening to them talk amongst themselves about how they needed to make sure that their organizational structure was available for other jurisdictions and that their minister needed to see that his policies were, were getting displayed prominently from a, a um, you know, as compared to other organizations or other agencies. Um, and so we had some frank discussions and we made changes to the policy. We acknowledged that agencies needed to um, be, you know, be represented and we acknowledged that there was machinery of government or ag agency reports and a uh, messaging that, that needed to be on this portal. As soon as we did that, a, a, we have a strong governance group in, in WA. It was probably the fastest thing it was ever approved. It was, I think there was a, a, a collective sigh of relief and the agencies said, well, what took you so long? Um, so now we are uh, onboarding, a pipeline is moving, is full. And, and it's a, we've got other agencies that want to come in from the side and leverage the platform for specific events. So um, it's all work and hard grind now. And I can't leave digital disruption without a um, mention in the pandemic. When that hit in March, the state government um, immediately jumped to using WA GovAU as its main and central, maybe only digital channel to, to the community. Um, it didn't actually really affect us that much from a, an ICT perspective or service delivery point of view, because we had all the building blocks in place. You know, and we were scalable, we were available, we had a advanced workflow, we had high security. Um, a, so all, all we had were new business units that had a higher priority than our older business units. So a, from, from that perspective, we had built this, a, a, a platform correctly, it could scale and it was fit for purpose for government. 
Right, so if anything, uh, if anything that you're going to take away from this present presentation today is if you want to minimize your time in the, in the trough of dis disillusionment, and for us it was about six months, then make sure that you understand the drivers of your stakeholders. Don't get caught up in just the research and build relationships with them, uh, both inside and outside of uh, work groups or formal settings. Drupal is a feature rich and fit for purpose in the government context, and it could be considered te more technically superior than most of its competitors. But unless you get the buy-in and trust of your stakeholders, then, then, a, then you're going to find it hard to get any traction with them. They need to trust you. And they need to, and they need to trust the people that stand behind both the Drupal product. So the, the future for a, a WA government ecosystem is the movement towards um, identity. Uh, most other jurisdictions have a whole of government identity system. We, we still don't, but we are working with the federal government and uh, Queensland and South Australia on what they call the Trusted Digital Identity Framework and its implementation a, a will be complete, or at least the first version of that implementation will be complete by March next year. Once that's in place, then we're going to be able to do things like what New South Wales does or, or Victoria does, where they can register citizens quickly or use already pre-registered identities to be able to do things like a COVID grants or um, a, you know, location based, based data for if you want to register for a QR code to get into a restaurant. Um, a, then we will start leveraging um, a new, new types of portals. We call them elemental government a processes or portals or platforms. Um, they, these are platforms that don't actually replace any full government process, but will provide the building blocks to, uh, to be part of all government processes. So you can see there those smart forms and workflow engines and payment gateways and I, I guess integration services. Um, they, they don't replace anything, but they, for example, a smart form and a workflow engine may actually replace an infringement system or at least 80 percent of it so it's exciting times here for in, in western australia from the point of view of, of government platform delivery um this is a high level diagram and if, if, if you get a technical slant we are moving towards apis and triple has that api component as i mentioned earlier and we are moving towards microservices that are going to give us, allow us to scale out and go quicker. Um, and we're going to continue to leverage um, a, a Amazon a infrastructure, a Amazon ecosystem for infrastructure. Um, and this is my last slide, basically. This Victor Dominello from uh, New South Wales basically demonstrates what whole of government uh, um, platforms can do. And uh, this appeared in my LinkedIn. A uh, New South Wales quickly turned around a uh, workflow to be able to uh, um, allow its businesses to register for COVID grants. In WA, we can't do this. Um, it's our, our businesses still need to go to two or three agencies and it's a manual pro manual process some agencies have electronic forms some agencies still require you to fill it in in writing and send and email it in and that would be me thank thank you very much for having me and it's uh, been an interesting to be part of this uh, yeah, virtual presentation 
Excellent. Thank you very much, Bill. That was excellent. So I'll just see if there's any questions in discussion forum. You can use the function on the left of the screen. Sorry, the right of the screen. Cool. Bill, we can probably switch to the EA view and see if there's anything coming through the discussion panel. A lot of claps and thank yous. Um, so um, there's a one from Lee about yes. reinvesting the money. So in the presentation, I actually said that agencies get to uh, keep that money. Um, the, so the assumption there is, and, and this is a, with no authority whatsoever, that the agencies would then be free to accelerate, to invest that money to provide better government services in their, in their field. Excellent. Okay. I think we've got some questions. If you just flick to the live Q&A option at the bottom, Bill, I will highlight some. And if you just look in starred. Yeah. So if you just look at the starred ones. Um, I clicked on live Q&A and I see nothing. Just hit on starred. And I'll feed them through to you. Gotcha. Start. And... We can try hitting the most recent in right. the live Q and A. Yep. Here we go. Well, it's in, so I've got this little window, and it says, "How did you deal with internal stagnation of?" And then I see nothing else. So this is interesting stuff. So I, I'll read that. So, uh, how did you deal with internal stagnation of government processes? Everyone wants change. No one wants their own patch to change. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've got a classic line for that one, and that is a. Hey, Everybody wants to collaborate, but they want to do it in, on their terms and conditions. And that, that is the hardest thing to do when you're at the, doing the whole of government platform thing or whole of government anything. And that is to come to a common understanding where there's mutual benefit between all parties. We, we still have a, um, a open resistance to the digital government policy. A, we, we have a lot of parties that misinterpret it, but it's about building those relationships. You know, when, when they, uh, I talk to some a, a fairly big vendors, they actually think, well, we'll just come in, put our platforms in, and agencies will move to it. And I said, well, you haven't actually showed me any business value. You just talked about the technology. So a, um, a, from a stagnation point of view, if you don't keep the conversation up, yeah, you, you stagnate and people will drift off and do their own thing. So messaging is, is really important. So I'm, I'm looking at this other question. Is there much appetite for WA government? And then that's all I see. Excellent. We've got a few minutes, six minutes. I will go through the questions. Sure. Is there much appetite for WA government to collaborate with other state governments like New South Wales or Vic? Oh, we do. Um, a, mo mostly we are collaborating heavily with South Australia and Queensland. Um, a, and what I say by that is we are we have a half an hour to one hour catch up every two weeks. Um, we, I, from a Victorian point of view, I, I, I have a relationship with Jordan Walsh, who's their uh, API a product owner. And through him, I have found many contacts with the, the, the uh, Victorian government. Um, New South Wales seems to be a, a very large beast. Um, a, if you make a contact, you they quickly get moved on, or you you, you don't you don't actually get to have a, a long lasting relationship with them. But hey, we're we're, we're looking for it because we are the uh, a, a laggard in some way from the digital point of view, and we will continue to be a laggard. So any time that we can go faster by learning from other people, we will. Excellent. So Jonathan Hunt says, "What are you looking for at work for looking at for workflow slash rules engine?" Um, the 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 um, the Red Hat decision manager is an obvious one for us, um, and that's only because we also bought into the Red Hat a SSO from an identity point of view, but we're also looking at platforms. Um, there's a platform that we have been looking at that 
works with that job form platform that we already have called Process Maker. Um, the reason that we, I, I personally like use, using online platforms is that they need to innovate to keep your business. And as long as you're going to use APIs, then then if they if they start if they start to stagnate, then then you can move to another platform. That sounds really easy, but I know, I know it's not. What I what the team and I are doing is we we use APIs for everything. So we're always putting that layer of abstraction between our core systems and the platforms that we use. So while it would be painful to move, say, a forms platform, it wouldn't be impossible. It also allows us to set agencies because the other thing about whole of government stuff is if you tell an agency you will be using this platform, you will find people that will resist it. So if you use APIs, then bring your own. It won't be supported. You want to use your platform, just be in alignment with the APIs that we're providing you. And that then everybody's happy. But we always provide a platform that we support and, and, and look after. Okay, thank you, Bill. That's, I've got another one from Fraser Thomas. I see a lot of state government agencies using the, that search function as a primary item on their home pages. How much work actually goes into get to getting that set up and working well? Um, it's a, it's an interesting one. So, getting the technology up and running is is a uh, it's it, it's uh, to me it's straightforward and doesn't take a long time. What is a continuing battle is the taxonomy and getting a, a um, authors to to comply with that taxonomy otherwise you won't find it um the next generation of stuff which we looked at but couldn't afford was to look at ai search and i'll only use this product name because we've, we've used it and tested it the amazon kendra product uses machine learning to go through your stuff and build relationships up so from our, from our transactional point of view, instead of saying how much is a fishing license in Western Australia, it would actually come back and say $50. It wouldn't give us a link. It would actually tell us the, the answer without, no, here's the link like Elasticsearch does. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, technology is, is a, a fairly standard. It's the taxonomy and the compliance to the taxonomy. It takes a lot of work. Excellent. Now there's two more questions left and they're both search related, but I'll do one at a time. One is from Sahal is where was there any research to show that users prefer to see the big search bo box on the home page? Um, yes. So a uh, users and this is from the UK government. Um, and it's all to do with do, every website has different menu systems and users actually don't want to uh, follow or learn new menu systems unless it works in with their uh, uh, viewpoint. So this, the actual search uh, input box is there for, well, type in what you want and there's a good chance we can find it without you having to learn something. So yeah, there, there was strong research around that. Okay, there was one more question and it is from Andreas. And it is, what are the key reasons for choosing Elasticsearch? Um, so um, when we were developing the, uh, the portal, it was a case of the, the, the initial developer that we were using wanted to use the internal Drupal search. It's like, well, okay, how will, we, how will this be able to scale? Um, how will other websites be able to use the search? Boom, can't do it. Because it was a, it was gone down the path of it would be in, it would be an internally focused search engine. This Elastic Search goes off and searches other search en engines, uh, not other search engines, other websites, and other uh, systems within the whole of government ecosystem to provide a more holistic solution. So, um, you know, we have a, a back office systems that actually load different indexes onto the Elastic Search platform that then can be shared with other people. Excellent. I think that's all the time we have. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, Bill, for your presentation. Thank um, you. That wraps, that wraps up pretty much today. There's some closing remarks in a, in a few moments. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. See you.